Hello and welcome to this tutorial on VTP configuration and verification. Now we've already covered all of the concepts and theory behind VTP and if you haven't yet checked out that tutorial I recommend you do it before continuing with this particular video. Now the good news is compared to all of the theory we had to cover all the different concepts and details the actual configuration of VTP is pretty simple and that holds true as well for the verification commands. So the good news is there's not a lot of stuff you have to remember here. We're going to start off by configuring a VTP server and a VTP client. We'll take a look at how to verify our, our configurations and to make sure that VTP is functioning properly. And then we'll finish everything off by going over some tips and tricks to VTP. Our lab is going to be pretty simple. We'll have two switches, switch A and B. And switch A we're going to configure as our server and switch B will configure as the VTP client. In between them obviously is going to be a trunk. Okay so let's get started we'll log into the lab. We'll begin on switch A which will be our server and before we start the configuration commands let's actually take a look at the current status. The first command is show VTP status. You'll see here it tells us the current VTP version that's running on this switch also the configuration revision number currently set to zero it tells us what mode this switch is operating in currently it's a server and that's the default mode so some of our work is already done for us at least on this switch and then it tells us the VTP domain name which is currently just set to default if I wanted to see what the password was configured if a password was configured we have to issue a different command and that is show VTP password this is going to tell us that one is not configured because we haven't done that yet. If there was one configured, it would tell us what it is. Okay, so these are the two uh, verification commands that we'll be using. So now let's start our configurations. The first thing we want to do is set the VTP mode. I know it's already set for the default, but let's just go ahead and show you the command VTP mode, the parameters, client, server, transparent we'll say server and watch this the switch actually tells you hey this is already in VTP server mode so a little bit of useful feedback there next we want to set the domain name the command is VTP domain and the only parameter is the ASCII name the text name you want to put in there I'm just going to call this lab and remember this is case sensitive so if I put lab with a lowercase l on the server um, rather on the client then they will not uh, sync up and they will not be in the same VTP domain keep that in mind now as soon as I hit enter uh, this with this command as soon as you set the VTP domain the switch is immediately going to begin sending out VTP updates over any trunks it has configured so keep that in mind once you actually set the domain the switch becomes a, a live VTP server okay now if a switch does not have a VTP domain set already, it's just using the default, which is blank, as soon as it starts to receive VTP packets, it will actually uh, use and adopt that domain name. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you have a client somewhere out in the network, as soon as it gets these VTP messages from the server, if it doesn't have a VTP domain set, it'll start using that domain name, assuming there's no password set. Okay? Now let's go ahead and set up a password. Again, this is optional, but it's a good idea to do it. I'm going to make mine very simple. Do not use the password Cisco in your production network. Make it more complicated than that. We're not going to do it, but if we wanted to set up VTP pruning, the command is just VTP pruning, and there are no parameters after that. Also, if we wanted to uh, specify a particular version of VTP, it's just VTP version and you see we have two choices one and two I'll just put two and it actually tells us hey you're already in version two okay so those are all of the available VTP configuration commands like I said earlier not too many now let's go ahead and take a look at our status again show VTP status 
and you can see now we have the VTP domain is set to lab. Everything else pretty much stays the same. And show VTP password. It'll tell us the password this time. Okay, so that is the server configurations. Now let's go ahead and jump on the clients, the client switch and configure that. Okay, on switch B, before we make any configuration commands, let's take a look around. So we'll issue the show VTP status command, and we'll see something different here right off the bat. VTP version. It's running version 1, but it's telling us it can run version 2. That's good to know. The configuration revision number is 0, and it's currently operating in the default mode as well as server. It already has a domain name configured, so perhaps this came from a different network already. no VTP password is configured. So it makes sense that this particular switch has not joined the domain of switch A because it's in a different domain, blue, as opposed to lab. Something else I want to show you. Show run include anything related to VTP. And you get nothing back. Why is that? Well, VTP configuration commands are not stored in the running configuration. They are stored in the VLAN.dat file. So we are kind of limited, limited to the show uh, commands for verification and also the show VLAN brief command. So let's keep that in mind. Let's take a look at our VLANs as well. You can see we have VLANs 1 through 10, 55, 56, and 99. Now switch A has a different set of VLANs. It has 1 through 10 as well, and it has 99, but it does not have 55 and 56. In fact, instead it has 22. So remember, the switch with the higher revision number is going to be the switch whose VLAN configuration is adopted by the other switches. So if we do this properly, switch B when we're done is going to have VLAN 22, and it will actually delete and remove VLANs 55 and 56. So this is a good test for us to actually see what happens when the revision number uh, is lower than that of the server and it adopts the new configuration. Okay, so let's get started. We're safe to add this to the domain because the revision number is zero. It's as low as it can get. So we're not in danger of overriding the server. First, let's make this a client. So VTP mode, client, and now let's change the domain name. VTP domain, member, case sensitive, so it's an uppercase L for our example. And we now have to add that password, VTP password, and we said it was Cisco. Now let's jump out of configuration mode and see what we have. Show VTP status. We're still running version 1. We're operating as a client and our domain name is lab. So the commands worked properly. Check out the password and that's working as well. So how do we test this? Well let's take a look at our VLANs. Aha! Look at that. VLAN 22, and I named it new VLAN on switch A, is now on switch B. And you'll see 55 and 56 were deleted. So this shows us you know, proof positive that uh, the switch A with, with the higher revision number overwrote the configuration. So now the VLAN configuration between the two switches are consistent, they're synchronized, and that's exactly what we wanted. We are back on switch A and I want to briefly talk about some troubleshooting steps and some tips to VTP. If your VTP client or server is not joining a VTP domain, the first thing you want to check is are there any active trunks between the two switches? Remember VTP messages only traverse trunk links. So quite simply issue the show interfaces trunk command and in fact here we've confirmed we do have an active trunk between switch A and switch B. So that's the first thing you want to check. The second thing goes to your VTP configurations. 
So if we look at the status, we want to make sure that the domain name is exactly the same on all switches. And remember, it's case sensitive. Finally, check out the password. This is also case sensitive. And if it's not exactly the same on all switches in the domain, they will not uh, join the domain and synchronize their configurations. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is, let's say we want to reprovision switch A uh, into a, another domain. And remember, the switch with the highest revision number will cause all other switches uh, to synchronize to its configuration. So when you add a switch to a VTP domain, it's best practice to get that revision, revision number down to zero. And there's a really simple way to do this. You can just jump into configuration mode and change that particular server to a transparent mode server and then you can change it back to a server or a client or whatever you want you can adjust your domain name and that way the VTP uh, revision number will go back to zero you can also take a more drastic approach of deleting the VLAN.dat file because that's where the revision number and the domain name are stored Okay, so just keep that in mind. It's best practice to get that revision number down to zero. All right, let's summarize what we covered. There are only two commands required in order to enable VTP, and that is the VTP mode and domain commands. The other three are all optional. However, keep in mind it's a best practice to configure a password. Now in terms of verification and troubleshooting, we have a lot of options. We have two commands, the show VTP status and password commands. And I've also listed the show VLAN brief command because that's a good way to indirectly confirm VTP. Remember, we can see if the VLAN configurations are synchronized by using that command. Now if you're having trouble with bringing a switch into a VTP domain, remember to confirm that a trunk link is active between that switch and another switch and also confirm your VTP configuration, specifically the domain and the password are case sensitive. Finally, it's a best practice to reset the revision number of a switch to zero when you add it to a domain. That way there's no chance of it overriding the configurations of other switches and causing an outage. Okay, so that's it. That is the VTP configuration and verification tutorial. Thanks for watching.